X, 100% win rate. It's actually something else. And, you know, we can move away from being so objective. We can kind of look down the uh, yeah. the rose tinted glasses of this that. one. Imperial have just been like so head and shoulders above where you could have possibly put this crew at. It's so hard to quantify when you look at like past results for this. And I don't know, man, a big part of me finds myself on board the Imperial train. I think a lot of people are in that camp right now. Yeah, in the same way that when we saw G2 managed to long it out against outsiders and close a series when they were down. And this is a team that has really had trouble ending series even when they're in the lead. I think if you flip it back the other way, if Cloud9 can come back from that unbelievable loss on map one and still win this series, like that shows some serious mental power for Cloud9. But the powerhouse has already begun. The fight at bottom B and it's interst to trade to give us a four on four. Yeah, Cloud9 wanted to go quick. They wanted to go fast on the back of that, but because it's a little more drawn out, it takes a little longer than they liked, they're going to start to slow it down, start to explore, explore some other avenues here. Imperial remain firm. They give up middle, they reinforce that B site, and they kind of spread their resources with a real focal point being over here towards B, over in middle. Vinny starts to hear these footsteps now. He's been entrusted with the dual Berettas. He's going to have to put them to use. Yeah, I think when these smokes come down, those duelies are going to be really, really interesting to just either go through or put a lot of shots through very, very quickly. It's the fire rate that's so attractive with these. Cloud9 are doing the deep take, the outsiders take. They're going all the way for the spawn right now, and they're going for the throat. Fur gets pushed out by smokes. Molotov is the gap. Vinny will take it. Fallen hits a kill. Everyone's getting tagged up, and Vinny's finishing them off with a duel. Shiro stuck in the middle of the site, and Fur picks him out of the round. As Vinny can't clear, Nafani doubles, and Imperial win that pistol round to start the map. Yeah, it's over. Imperial win the major. There we go. Right, look, <laughs> pistol round locked in. They get off to a good start here. They really do. Uh, that, that all the makings of Cloud9 doing something, but they just get whittled down coming up the ramp, right? The footsteps heard early by Vinny, going one for one on the B skirmish. Having, you know, just kind of everyone rotating so quickly and lay down fire on this bomb site causes a lot of problems. Cloud9 never really had the room to work with their Four spy now on the cards for Cloud9. They want to try and get their heads back into this one right away. Big old bite. The scout shot will miss. Shiro tagged up early as Cloud9 clear up towards ramp. They do have a Molotov. But Hobbit with his back turn. Vinny just walks in on a random timing. There were two players holding it. And now there's no one deleted by Vinny who goes ahead of the HE and finds further damage. They even pre-smoke the sandbags. If that Molly comes in, it will do nothing. Inters stuck in on yellow side. And they don't even know about Fur. He can go at a moment's notice. Back spotted, body dropped, and Fur backs out. Oh mate, the nay just to brutalize Inters. Like there's not there's not any route back into this one. There just isn't. Like you're already just churned up on the back of Vinny from Sandbags and Fur on the short side. It, it's just screaming confidence from Imperial, man. Like they they were so down to fight. They were so keen to get involved. Fallen can have a double on his plate right now yeah. as Cloud9 are just solely looking forward. They're not even considering the presence of this short man. Oh, it will go that. back and clear Fallen out. Shiro decides something ain't right. Yeah, but they think they have short now, and it's nothing like that. There's still Fur, who's re-aggressed off this angle. He started here, and he'll finish the round here. Shiro's gone, and Bolts cuts through Inters and the low health. It was always going to be difficult, even getting all the big guns out for Imperial with two A1Ss. Cloud9's force gets brushed aside with ease. Now they've got to take an Iki Diki as Imperial look to build up 3-0. This is super cool though, right? It's very, very, uh, very neat that you have Vinny here, I think, right? Because Furia were really keen on Vertigo back in the day. It was like one of their go-tos back when he was in the team. So 
He's going to have a lot of ideas as to little tricks, little things to try and squeak past Cloud9. And with him looking confident early on, that was always one of the things that was missing. Uh, even earlier on in the Major was getting like these big games out of Vinny. Bird doesn't know that a Glock's got all the way up short, so it gets a little awkward there. But it should have some normality restored here. Yeah. Oh, that's Team Flash. Fallen can just fight, right? He's got the favored gun. He's got all the health in the world. P250 has to hit the dink. So Fallen's just fine to close this round, you think? There it is. Two for him. And one casualty is not cause for concern. Not yet, at least, as Cloud9 come in with their first rifle round. Full by with Shiro on the orb. He has second spawn. You could take a B peek with this one, but nothing too special towards that A site, at least. It's not like Fallen has his yet anyway. Last map, Shiro was 14 and 1 against uh, FNX on fights. So many of them was FNX coming up on short A on T side, and, and Shiro would just have to open uh, first pick. I think that gives a lot of credit to Imperial, considering they won those rounds despite FNX getting shut down so often so early. Right now, full round control, close shot for Shiro, shows that AWP at bottom A. Imperial are fighting for it, but really the hit is yet to come. Cloud9 are pressuring B. Naphne's trying to clear Tetris with that jump spot. I think if Imperial win this first round, man, that is like this first rifle on rifle round, that would set them up really nicely. You, know, you think about the game outside the game, where Cloud9's heads are at. They're hoping that the moment they bring these guns out, they can hit the ground oh. running. That is ugly from FNX. Nice. The follow up for Axile, double opener into the B play. And nothing really that Imperial can do about this. The bomb is still at B ramp. Maybe that has a chance to make things get weird. Shiro's going to get heard falling back. But I think Imperial already have their minds set yeah. on the save here. They were never destined to give this one a go. And so Cloud9 do hit the ground running. I like that, you know, they don't go back for it. They just wait for that, that one man who's on his own to go and secure the bomb. Not like they have to give up the bomb site, bomb site and risk Imperial coming in early on a retake. Also, if Hobbit swings there in the middle, Fallen was still holding onto it for quite a while. Like there were two opportunities for picks there for Imperial, and if you you know they net both of them, suddenly a B retake is on the cards. But this is the right call, saving all weaponry. It will also allow for that AWP to come into the next gun round, and Imperial know that Shira is wielding his. So. Bit of respect goes the way of Cloud9 with a nice double for Axel. Both players whiffing a spray. But the AK comes in supreme for Cloud9. And they get on the board early. Yeah, I agree. This could have sparred out control very quick with Imperial starting strong. But a taste of reality on Cloud9's map pick where they do some of their best work as they pick up that first gunny. This is where things get a little more exciting though, right? I think the Shiro versus Fallen head-to-head -head was one of the coolest things about Overpass. And we're gonna have a chance to explore that early on here in this Vertigo matchup. Fallen bringing that orc out. Shiro yet to put his to too much use. is leaning down towards the bottom of A. Cloud9 working this B control. FNX getting oh, double lovely. naded. Lovely nades Ooh. to try and send them in. They weren't ready for bolts at default. That nade's going to make FNX real uncomfortable. It feels like they want to bully that position. And it's netted a four on four. Fallen holding middle. Cloud9 now go very, very quiet. I wonder, though, if the whole idea here is to try and get Hobbit activated on, like, a mid lurk. It's going to depend a lot on the success of these A players moving up through ramp. Imperial clearing mid with two players. Hobbit, it's he should get traded here, even if he gets his first shot off. Nice tag. Fur finishes the job, and that mid lurker is gone. Now Cloud9 make noise. They activate, and they're loud while they do so. Vinny on and off angle, cleared by Inters on eight health. There's still a couple of Molotovs. They can still place them down on the bomb site to stop a plant. That will delay the short activation, but Axel's already in off the ramp. Fur gone. That second molly lost to the hands of time as it goes in. Cloud9 take the site, and Imperial already giving them respect. Save called immediately. Massive kills for Axel and just creeping through and getting around the edge of that smoke. 
for Imperial played that round a little more standard, tried to play for the bomb plant and deny it with a Molotov. There was definitely a way in to retake with utility, with kits, with an orb, but Cloud9 catch kills and Imperial will concede again. Yeah, rough one to have sail away from you, man. So much of that just hinging on uh, on Vinny and Fur finding success in their 1v1s. And, you know, you can see the kind of degree of comfortability that comes with this map for Cloud9. They don't get as flustered when they're going, you know, men down. They don't get as flustered when those site takes don't go exactly the way they want when they're slowed by utility. Yeah, even just the idea of going in and abusing this Tetris position and getting a pick and walking back, they know that Imperial aren't going to re-aggress after they lose a player here. You yet to see any like aggro flash setups for Imperial to take these stairs. That needs to be coming through, otherwise Cloud9 can just play that info game. Haven't had Imperial even really take ramp properly. They've not had the AWP in that position yet. Fallen's got it back after that save. But no spawns just yet. Cloud9 will continue to control ramp. Oh, that's a nice spam for Fur. Nafni, through his own smoke, is gone first. They'll trade that kill for the ramp control. It's worthy. But Cloud9 again gets to run one of their executes. Either standard smoke walls or that combo we saw earlier, the deep Ellie smoke. Axel's hunting these kills, just looking to duel. He's feeling very fresh right now after an excellent opening map. Playing it very close on that pillar, but just enough cover from those players on the site. Smokes come down, and Molly pushes for out, but he won't escape the... He won't uh, survive the escape. Vinny gets naded. This util for Cloud9 right now is the creme de la creme. Imperial locked out of this retake, and Axal, man, he's like a real nasty surprise oh. as you look to move in. So dirty. It's yeah. taken a long while for this to take shape for Imperial. Oh, they smoke short, not the bomb. Axal can see it. Yeah, he's just waiting patiently. Here's his chance, right? They're gonna move in, tap on the bomb. Axar springs the trap, is caught falling, but still delivers. And a missed shot out of Fallen's AWP. Cloud9 tied this game up early on at three to three. It's a neat little A exec to get them there. They're looking to stumble back to their feet after that long old overpass game. Yeah, definitely seeing the inexperience of Imperial already on this A bomb site, right? And Cloud9 is just abusing it, not knowing when to give up the site and play these retakes. Even though Imperial are getting man advantages, they seem to be giving Cloud9 ways in, whether it was Fur in the middle of the bomb site getting caught by Axel through the smoke a couple of rounds ago, or right there where they, they don't use the util to even get on the bomb. They just try and cut off one of the many positions that Cloud9 have in the post plants. And a very cheeky position for Axon. Not a common spot. A perfect time to whip it out. This one should get even cleaner for Cloud9 as they look to build up quite the bank. They check the boost. Naphne's on top of it. Two entries. The hype man of the squad. Been Ooh. loud all day, but Vinny shuts him out with a big D. That's a lovely D kill from Vinny. But how much further can he realistically take this, right? He's going to get overwhelmed. They're splitting him from short and ramp, and he's boxed in. Axile gets rid of him. No, the FNX left. It's just a matter of time here. Cloud9 up in the lead. Yeah, Cloud9 look pretty focused right now. This util is, is so good. The boost mollies every single time on this A site. Imperial, they need to find a way to beat Cloud9 at their own game on ramp, be it through re-aggression or controlling more of the ramp from the start of the round. Even when they had that five on four, Cloud9 managed to break through. So what's the solution here for Imperial? No orb, but plenty of util to try and do early damage. And Cloud9 have already changed it up, sending the orb for a B pick, Oh, good flash. Get Shiro off. FNX now controls the stairs. A little bit more real estate for Imperial to work with. Yeah, they heard the molly tag as well, so they know he ran out of there. They got the sound cue. Oh. Axel has just seen that util go in, trying to gain some space. We'll get shut out by Bolt. Entirely separate skirmish going on for top ramp. And Burr, yeah, yeah, not ready for Napani, just wide swinging him. Mid. Oh, and it's not there to flick. Bolts is ready. 
Second kill from him. He held be strong, but he can't do it the second time around. Hobbit runs in alone. Cloud9 just roaming in this round, sending each player out on their own fights, feeling the freedom right now on this T side and winning everything. Hobbit pushed all the way up. Smoke shrouded, a bit of cover, but Fallen picks the planter. Uh -huh. He spams Hobbit, he doesn't hit the shot though, and Hobbit finds the gap on the fade. FNX 1v2, the nade could kill Nafany, but he's a long way from the danger zone, and Hobbit swaps sides. That's so annoying for FNX, man. He's going to check left, has to check right, and he won't believe in it. Cloud9 have chained five together to open up this T side. And it's no contest right now. The pistol might have been successful for Imperial, but that's reality crashing down around them as Cloud9 chained together all these rounds in succession. So much getting given by Napani over here towards Ramp Man. It's a constant nuisance. And as you say, very loose in that round there. Not afraid to go out and just play individual fights. Go to where successful. Go to where the going's good. Yeah, if there's one thing we talked about a lot on that first map, it was how they disrespect the utility in Cloud9, right? They're just running through smokes on both halves, whether it's coming through monster smokes or even on retake rounds coming in through their own dumps of smokes as well. Uh, like Cloud9 played timings to perfection that last round. Oh, what a spam. Nafani finishes the Thor job. Done a lot of damage with this scout. This could actually yeah. set Fur up real nicely, oh. but double swung. And he's knocked out. They might add 20 HP between them, but he's never to know that. And they say Bombsite now compromised. Oh, this round is so quick for Cloud9. Definitely can see a mindset shift. I wondered if they'd be a little bit rattled after losing over pass the way they did with more ample opportunity to end it. Imperial ever had, but they're focused back in and they've got another bomb plant. No one here to, to deny it. Bolts has to just hang around for exits, try and get an upgrade. FNX should save. There's no way in winning this round, even with the low players. Cloud9 can re-smoke. I right, know guns in hand. That realization setting in for Imperial. This one is a bridge too far. Cloud9 have already even left. Only they had a kit, huh? Yeah, right? Kind of ballsy to have just entrusted the entire thing to Hobbit. Ooh. Uh, Hobbit's dead. I respect it, but no, too early. Too early. He was dead to the bomb, if not jumping off the building. And Cloud9, six in a row now. First pause coming out of Imperial. Let's see what they come up with, right? Uh, FNX can drop an AWP if he wants to fall in. Or Vinny. I think that would be really nice. Get that big green in play ASAP. Fallen's got second spawn as well for A. Not ideal, but... Yeah, I don't think you would run the risk of taking that all peak with second spawn, man. It's scary, especially when you know Shiro. Yeah. You know, if you give him that pick, that is like the undoing of the A site. And Cloud9 has just been running up through the Nafni smoke ride, right? just coming up yellow very, very quickly. We had that one round where first spammed him out, but otherwise they've just had full control towards top ramp. Let's see what Imperial have come up with in this timeout. While they think they're solving problems, Cloud9 are creating new ones. Mid aggro going to be the first order of the day. Bolts does not commit to it. That molly denies too much space. Cloud9 go pretty slow to open up. They want to see what tricks Imperial had up their sleeve here. Knowing that something will have made a change on the back of that pause. Oh, Penny Smoke didn't go to plan there. But maybe it gives him a bit of hope, a bit of help. The fella threw the ground. Nafani. Not up yellow yet. Mollied out Tetris. I think Imperial are probably a bit scared of playing it with some of the double nade molly combos we've already seen. Ooh, Vinny. That smoke thrown by his teammate gives Nafani a bit of cover to hide behind. They have no idea. And Shiro's picked him from the bottom side up close. Fur is aware of Nafani's close position, able to trade. Molly in. Shiro's got to choose which way does he go back instead. Keeping that four on four. This is the first slower round for Cloud9 where they're giving Imperial a bit of respect. Burning out all their util, though. If Cloud9 ever get a plant in this round, 
uh, retake is going to be almost impossible. There's a late mid lurk in Hobbit ready to activate, and right now no eyes on this position. Yeah, this really hinges on just a big individual moment now out of either Fallen or Fur in this sight hold. Util starting to go over. Cloud9 are moving in, going for the throw. Fallen with the first. Ooh. And Fur wins his fight on the short side. This is good. This is exactly Done. what needed to happen. There just isn't time for Shiro to play into this with both those players on the extremities oh. getting dealt with. Fallen even reads the wrap through middle. Oh, they're chasing him. Oh, oh, right there. oh no! Fur, so close. One more shot. Shiro will get away with the orb. Lives to tell the tale. God. Attack pause, man. It did put the fear in Cloud9. It made them be very slow in that one, right? They tried to wait, see if they could catch a bit of, you know, maybe overextension out of Imperial, see wow. what that change was. These were the swing fights over here on A. Fur and Fallen. Double kills a piece, and that sets them up nicely. All right, now I think Cloud9 are going to go fast again. Yeah, they try and give a bit of respect the way of Imperial. Now they're back to aggressive ways. Vinny through the smoke, and Afni was right below yet again. And he's given us the five on four. Fallen re-aggressing short. With that smoke down, even if he mollies, Nafani's up and past it already. Oh, he's in the molly. Nafani finds him in the corner. No cover for Fallen. Five on three now. These rounds are very difficult to recover on Vertigo. First close on short, but he's going to get cornered. Trapped in, gets two. All you can ask of him there, but by this point, his team have all fallen short. And FNX is stuck alone on that B bomb site. He was the quieter guy in the first map. And being a B anchor right now with what Cloud9 is throwing at Imperial is not going to help him perform any better. Yeah, I think, I think Vinny was really expecting that after repelling one of these A plays, they were going to get given more respect over the wards ramp. He needs to taper off this short aggro, man. You know, you're not inferior anymore. You don't have some of these guys helping you out that you would normally have. Imperial do like to take more of a, you know, passive line towards ramp. And so that run through the smoke just feeds the beast, lets them pick up the pace to the A play. Cloud9, the response is immediate. They're onto a seventh, and with that, you know, the money kind of gets called into question here at a bare minimum. FNX is flushed with cash, so he can drop guns over. Yeah, Axel's just kept up his entry work from that previous map as well, just banging heads in this A site. He was a guy who even got that game going for Cloud9 without Axel going absolutely mental. Would not have been much of a contest. Pressure on B now yet again. Bob peaking middle wins that fight for your Hobbit, knowing this is the late lug in many of these rounds for Cloud9. Gives a big uh, slice of freedom the way of Imperial to just anchor down in their bomb sites, passive positions in B, not Hello, looking Fur. to offer up picks. Oh my god, Nafani's got no idea. Wow. And so that's a freebie. Fallen's dead oh. over in the B play, but FNX holds the line with the first. Now getting run at. He can't get any more out of it. But a 3v2. Nice nade. Shiro bought down a half health. Bolts is just waiting, waiting for his teammates to move in and help him out. Shiro's trying to take space away, but with two players here, the trade could come through. Well, can't quite get there in time, oh, and so Molly Shiro's still mate. alive. That Molly, yeah, does make life hard for Inters. Shiro tries to make up for it, but it's a one for one. Inters in the oh, clutch, no. and Fur's going to best him. Oh, dear, Cloud9, that had all the makings of a 2v3. Until that Molly comes out, it forces a swing out of Inters. It forces Shiro into a fight he didn't want to take as well. Both of them get forced into the open. Yeah, he feels that one. That one's got to hurt as well, right? He didn't want to peek to throw the molly. He knew there was a second player there, but at the same time, just staying gun out, scoped up, might have been his best bet if that was the alternative. Cloud9 dropped the ball a little, a little bit, and Imperial capitalized. Good of them, but it's still a one-sided T-side right now. Can Imperial build off that round? FNX is orping. They get spawned towards that B bomb site. Maybe asking Fallen for it. It's pretty rough over a B right now. Barely ever going more than one for one. I think they're going to go trade the orb back. Luckily enough, Cloud9 aren't following through with like this fast A ramp commitment. And actually, no, they won't. 
It is just to do this double stack over here in middle. That's fine. If you've got a solo or B, this is good. FNX can take a couple of pot shots and get out. If I want to fight Ramp, he's been pretty successful. He's been getting away with a lot of cheeky business here. Nafni again, cowered in behind the top sandbags. Vinny has to check it, and he will. Five on four now. Do Imperial give up while the going is good? Or do they double down? Vinny wants more. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Two kills. That's a shot for Shiro on the escape. Vinny gets picked out of the round. But for 2.0 KD, wants to keep set it clean. Flash. All right. Fallen trying to set him oh, up. Oh, yeah, dodge. That's one bridge too far. Inter's turns from it. And it's a three on three. All that hard work of Vinny and Fur challenging Ram Pearly now out the window. Even odds in this one. And Cloud9 starts to move in. It's only Fallen in the A site right now. Open. On the short side, vulnerable to this push from Axile. Has to keep his attention oh, in the right shadow. place. He's seen the shadow. He knows that Shiro's what? moving in. Bit of spam. They don't know about Fallen yet. And Shiro thinks he has the element of surprise. He does not. Fallen's going to open. Oh, wow. Axile dead over at short. Uh -oh. oh, Nine scrambling for a way back in. Flash to set up bolts, but it's Fallen getting all the glory over at short. Just in turns left. Oh. Goes for the bomb. Caught out in the open. They've just got to finish the job. Missed shot from this AWP. Ah. And Bolts oh. gets it over the line. It all gets chaotic there. But in those moments of chaos, where it really gets weird, where it really gets wild, Imperial are able to tow that line yeah. and put a sixth up on the board. Hey, they've been through chaotic rounds and overpass. They can stay so calm in those rounds. They didn't let the pressure of the game get to them. And right there and then again, that, that rotate out of Bolts sold Fallen's position so well. Just getting spotted by Shiro walking up. I can't believe Fallen didn't take the shots when he saw Shiro's shadow. But still, tucked in on shore, able to double up to close the round. And all started off the back of Vinny, who does get aggressive. Typical Furia essence in him with a deep peak, finding two. Imperial fighting for what could be a pretty even half by the end of things. FNX spent his entire round scoped in a B, not wanting to make the mistake of leaving your bomb site over, uh, open and getting lurked into it. We're just probably feeling a little bit useless right now, not getting many chance to play into these gun rounds as Cloud9 continue to batter the A site even when they get B picks. Shiro scoped up. First found a pick again. He has just been wrecking Naphany down on this ramp. That's a deep peak to find him once more. Hobbit in the smoke, and Vinny again tries to hunt in the 5v4 and lets him down this time. A bit fast up the short side. Fur creeping in. Crab oh, walk, and what? Hobbit mopped up. Fur with a double. Oh. Man, what would it be if it weren't for this guy? So consistent in his performances. Just a brick wall for Imperial. Two to the name already. Needs even more. Fur. Flash. Fully blinded. They've got him trapped. Bolts oh. in. Shiro trying to spray. Getting hounded down. Axile good for one, but Bolts is going to trade it. Oh. oh, makes it a double. And it's just Shiro left now. A minute still to play with all the time in the world. Low on health and trying to get that bomb ah. out of there. Bolts is swinging from CT, but doesn't go all the way. So Shiro will elude capture. Right now, Imperial, they think they've got that bomb. They think that's their golden ticket. The orb now retrieved by Shiro in the clutch. He's armed himself with his weapon of choice. And he's been given the room to play this one out. If Imperial make the read, they've got the nade to stop the plant. That's what Shiro's going to have to go for right away. We have not seen a single late recommit back into B in a clutch yet for Cloud9. They have just started on B, ended on A. Shiro's going to get that stick. Bolts without the nade. It's on FNX. Now they've made the realization they've got to go. Hello? FNX taking his time, but he's here. They've got to trade this kill. Did they hear the orb get picked up is the question. Shiro's holding for a jump out of the construction. FNX is going for it, trying to bait the shot. He's forced it. Shiro, they know where he is right now. Bolt's coming in. The nade is primed for FNX. It's going to bounce off the site. It won't do a thing. Shiro's got a bit of a gap, a bit of a veil to find this shot. But Bolt pre-fires and Imperial clutch it out. Two on one. They shut down Shiro. Easier said than done as this scoreline balances. Okay, tie game now, right? Oh, my Even goodness. Even just being tied here is yeah. phenomenal. This is not a map. The Imperial play. Four win streak for Cloud9. They're taking down Nick, big. 
He'll run it through this one and kind of beat so, so here's something kind of fun for you, right? Uh, the, the most recent team to have bested Cloud9 on this map was Liquid's, uh, sorry, Fallen's Liquid oh, really? back at the end of 2021, ah. right? And Fallen was a big component of that. So, funny that. Thought you'd like it. Yeah. Tasty little history between these rosters, even if these full fives haven't played each other before today. Oh, there it is. I was waiting for finally FNX to get involved at B. He took stairs once, but there's a perfect flash pop, uh, pop play to find a five on four. And again, Imperial, they always want more. They're so motivated to take kills, but it doesn't work. Yet again, Shiro keeps things even. Imperial, one step too far. Bolt, oh, getting tapped. And he's still keen to fight. That will be his undoing. Imperial get a bit ahead of themselves yet again. Yeah, Vinny has pushed all the way down towards ramp here, right? You might kind of be wondering why are they overextended so much at B? Well, Vinny's given them a degree of freedom to stack that side of the map, but if he dies, that is A, open. Ooh. Vinny with the first, Molly now goes Going. in. He separated the push, but they run through. Dealing with the ramp man, the rotates are here. Util for fur could be used to delay this plot. Mollies go over, Fur's got to dodge them. He perished oh. in this Molly once already. Up through the short side, wow. he's dropped the bomb out in the open. Now that Util becomes paramount, it's a 2v2 for Fur and Fallen. Nade sails past, doesn't find the impact it was hoping for. Hobbit playing around the rafter, that Molly gonna heat things up for Axal. He's trapped, he's burning in, it's swinging wide. Fallen now dead, Fur in the clutch, but is he ready for Hobbit? Who's getting grimy with it, playing around the pillar, and there's the tap to close. Cloud9, 8-7 at the half. It's a one round advantage, moving in to their CT side. Yeah, but that was really a great side, a great T side for Cloud9. Imperial had a couple of clutchy rounds to keep it going. Fallen and Fur on the A site were the guys to look towards, but I I don't know if Imperial will have as much metal in their pocket to pull back an eight-round T-side of their own. Nine rounds, rather, and shut out this game. Might have to be a triple overtime or something. Some very disrespectful rounds out of Cloud9, knowing they are the better team on this map, even if Imperial have taken them the distance here tonight. Very interested to see what Imperial have in store in this pistol, because look at the sheer amount of utility. Three smokes. A Molotov, two flashes, two HEs. HEs are great for someone like Sandbags or Boost. You can blow Cloud9 out of a round. But will Cloud9 let them take these fights? Four on A, they're here to fight. It's just going to be a brawl for this ramp control. Cloud9 trying to get stuck in. Fur's already deep. Ooh. That's clean. Lovely tap. And now a molly at the Sandbag. Shiro's going to oh. smoke it. Nafani with the reply, with the equalizer. Now it gets awkward. Imperial, they grind to a bit of a halt. They feign that they're falling back, hoping that Cloud9 will concede a man away from this A site hold. Instead, they're triple over at short. Oh my goodness. They want to go back into ramp and they want to get this real estate. And it's going to leave them out in the open. Vulnerable to these blocks in the swing. Shiro with the first. Still looking to play the range game versus these blocks. Whoa. It served him well. Oh. <laughs> Those are clean kills. All those nades littering the ground and FX holding for a flank that never appeared. It was all the push up in the front for Nafani. Three from him, two from Shiro. And yeah, that backup from Imperial, while well, they were trying to fake Cloud9 out, make them panic, rotate. These guys have the experience. They're not going to fall for it. And Imperial never get, got to get up top A and throw one of those executes like they wanted to, right? If you get double smokes down, double nade boost, there's a, a really good way in there for Imperial. But Cloud9 keep the pressure on. They never let go. And they steal that pistol right back. Even calling it an instant pause. There's not going to be a force out here for Imperial. With no bomb down, they're going to just keep it clean with Glocks. Cloud9 making the use of every moment in this map to pull back this series from the brink of defeat. Follow Eco here, man. Imperial, they love going for these buys as fast and as quick as they can get them. Does mean that this one probably just sails past you. Now in a mid, but Hobbit's waiting here.
And this is a chance for Hobbit to become very rich indeed with this 79. Doubles down, dink down to five, but he's got teammates here to pull the trigger on this mid play, and they will put a stop to it. Axel, triple kill, big hold from him, and Hobbit just stopped the Glocks from doing anything wild, anything crazy. Now we have that investment for Imperial, and this is a real taste test as to how this half is going to shape up. And Shira's immediately got his open play as well. No no spawn, but that might not stop Shira from at least setting up on sandbags as Cloud9 try and just go for a, a standard ramp fight round. We've got the numbers here, starting 3A yet again. Oh, B lean. All right. Imperial going to try to take stairs. This is how Cloud9 started many of their rounds, even if they didn't end here. Might be a flash setup. Axel's very close. Inter's going to fight with him. They don't believe Imperial have the util to clear these positions. Might be right right now. It's just going to be fights throwing themselves over the top. Inter can't double up. That is ballsy from Cloud9. It's going to dig their own grave. Four on three. The nades are good. But Imperial, like Cloud9 did, already backed out. Hobbit, guy through the A smoke, has pushed up ahead of the B one. I mean, they've, they've got all this freedom to lean so heavy and to be because Shiro is just waiting over on short with this AWP. And he's very proficient at hitting this opener, just getting out of there, leaving after one, and that would bring it back to a three on three. They're almost encouraging Imperial to walk this AWP, but he's a little jittery, a little nervous. That first shot sails by, oh, and God, he goes what? for the commit. That is. A real overreach from Shiro. Tries to put a stop to the A play. Ends up teeing them up for a round on the opposing side. Nafani just wants a gun. And he is going to get one here. Constantly been getting the better of Vinny, hasn't he? And this round's no exception. Still, it's an Imperial round at the end of the day. Not a mistake yeah. you're used to seeing Shiro make either. It, it, part of that's the realization that maybe you didn't think every player was there, but the realization that, you know, if you give that up and you, you go back after the missed shot, they're going to trap you in short, right? They're going to take ramp, clear sight, and you're going to be stuck there. But Shiro shotgun orb, pretty, uh, pretty good at it. Yeah, definitely jittery. Right word. Too keen to close the round right there on short. Imperial managed to break it back and get into that A site. Eight rounds now on the T side. They find their picks on B and they rotate out. Even though Cloud9 had that info, it was not enough. Got to get the kills as well. They're using a lot of pauses as well. Mm. Now, I'm not too worried about it yet, but if this gets into crunch time, <laughs> I mean, we all remember Overpass, right? That was a real long one. I'm not planning for that again, but we'll see. I mean, history could never repeat itself, right? <laughs> That's what they always say about it. FNX could not win a third major, guys. Surely. Well, we'll see if the numbers are true. Shiro keeps getting bad spawns. Second in a row with the same one. Yeah, man, it's kind of been a rough break for CT spawns for AWPers. Yeah. Like, Fallen never really had it in the first half. Shiro's getting dealt that same hand now. But it's not like Imperial complete disrespect A rushing, so he can still go for his same peaks. He's actually got the one way as well. Peer over, it's Nafni taking those fights. He was so often picked from this exact angle by Fur who was really a nuisance in that first half. Hobbit with a very safe mid angle, he will at least get that info. It's a low risk, uh, unlikely to die in this position on the pixel. Oh my God, they got a throw a player up. A run boost for Vinny, up onto the boost Woo. in mid. I do like that. Speedy. Smooth moves. Shiro picked Fur on A, they have to commit. Yeah, they don't really have much left in the tank now, right? They worked for this mid control, but they are gonna go back. Starting to taper off, FNX is cool. He's got a lot of space up oh, the ramp, but Axar with this backstab. Oh, just looked away. FNX might be quiet, but that is a massive kill to have gained. A lot of space created now over towards B, and Worry surging through the Cloud9 ranks. He's even followed up with damage onto Inters. Imperial lobbing in. B exec util. FNX will die after his one frag. Imperial need to deliver on this. It can't afford to be in vain. Oh, Boost team. up for Hobbit. Wow. Dropping the bomb. And Vinny shut down crossing. It's Bolts and Fallen left in this one. 2v4. Two players at the generators ready to swing. 
Tap does not get the reaction it wanted. Oh! Now it will. They charge it down on a bit of a delay. Cloud9 are clean in the sight hold there. I love that delay because with every tap, Fallen's going to wait a few seconds, then he's going to go back for the stick. Cloud9 know that, yeah, maybe swinging immediately off the fake, they're going to have two guys with guns out, but Fallen can't wait forever. He has to pull the bomb back out and go for it again. What a shot for Shiro. Barely saw the tip of a first skull back on A. Nice entries from FNX into B, but it doesn't matter for Imperial, and they now have no money with no plant. Cloud9 getting saved by those boosts on B, Inters and Hobbit. Not letting Imperial get set up in the bomb site. I did like that run boost onto the mid box, though. That was something new. Flash deep for mid for Fallen. Hobbit should be blinded, but they might peek before it pops. Fur looks antsy. There's the flash. Hobbit for blind. He's getting baited by Jiggles. They're going to run him down, try and take him out with the blocks, but Inters has his teammates back, and that bomb has been dropped even further into the B-Bomb site. This eco is getting ruptured by Cloud9. 12 to 8. And they are ready to close right now. We need a gun round here out of Imperial to come up top, or Cloud9 are poised to take us to 3. They're trying to take us the distance, right? And Imperial aren't really ones to cave under the pressure. But they are getting outmatched. Pressure playing no part in it. Just a sheer outclassing thus far. Imperial going to try and find results over here on the A side. Shiro taking a swing, committed because of that molly. And the tag was so... Oh my god, the smoke just fell through the tiniest of oh. gaps. Didn't put out the Molotov, and so he burns. I don't believe it. That is heartbreaking for Shiro. Huge for Imperial, mate. You've got to capitalize on this, because that is not going to happen again. Yeah, they got a lot of space. The sandbags position late in the round with full util for Nafni. Not something they had to deal with. Hobbit this off angle. It's been good to him, but he's re aggressive to grab the Whoa. orb. Hobbit Whoa. knife out. Hello. Fur, he's going to peek it. What in God's name am I watching? That is a very scary one. Napney's got to drop his smoke. They now know he's here. That wasn't thrown from anywhere else. They won't even capitalize upon it. They know they have him locked in the gray screen in the mist. That nade actually blows the orb two inters. If Hobbit was here, he'd grab it. Will you? Nafani re-aggressing, catches Fur late on the ramp, now they need this crate fall and scoped up, and he does get it, but it, is it too late? 2v2, 30 seconds, his teammates holding the B stairs, Dude. but he's got it completely for free. If, if, okay, Fallen could get caught from the short repeat, but he's just gonna get away, just gonna get around the corner, and he was just looking down the line, looking at FNX's monitor there, trying to get an idea as to what it looks like at B. FNX has got all this room, the route to the plant is right there. Now they just need to deliver on this 2v2, both players for Cloud9 yeah. flanking currently. Yeah, such an experienced play. They're going to be here way ahead of whatever timing Imperial possibly are conceiving. Oh Fallen my. goes back, though. He's going to get that contact. Oh. Is he going to stay on the angle? They're both here. Do they peek together? Looks like it. Fallen caught. Only a tag. He had to get that kill. And FNX, bottom of the server in the 1v2. With the swing, first man dead. FNX, now's the moment, now's the time. Whoa, Whoa he's going to win out the 1v2. Imperial are still in this. They don't let up. They close that one out. In spite of Nafani's best efforts on the ramp reagro, you thought he'd done enough doubling up to turn that all on its head into a two on three. The trade from Fallen was pristine. Here's the replay of this smoke, by the way. Look, it goes in How between unlucky. the like, it just bounces it just through bounces, the molly, it just bounces. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. Not ideal, and you don't think it matters in the moment, but look how much it comes down to. Fallen only hit a tag, and FNX clutches it out in a very dangerous position, just stuck in the open with only double to cover. We said Imperial had to win that round, and they do right by us. One more on Dude, the notch. They could break Cloud9's money here, right? I know I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit. There's still a whole round to be played, but there's... Uh, you know, this is all in for Cloud9. If there all... was going to be a route for Imperial back into this to keep it really competitive, it's not just winning the last round, it's winning this one as well. If they yeah. get it over the line, suddenly uh, it's 11-12, quick as you like, and they're right there. It goes both ways, Harry. 
Coming down to 1v1s, you don't have a sustained economy either. Cloud9 can flip this one back their way and break Imperial's cash. It's do or die right now. All on this one. Vinny shut down on short. Nafani has really come into his own on this CT side with opening duels. Just throwing himself into ramp fights in terms of the middle. Spots that play and won't overextend. He has a nice pixel gap on the cross. Fallen's been picked by Shiro Zorp and he is just not having a ball right now. Both A players gone. Fawns gets very deep but Inter's flicks back and this round is laid to rest immediately. 1v2 may have been doable 1v5 is a whole nother beast. Yeah, Cloud9 have got the bomb as well. So, like, really, no matter how much FNX does over here in middle, th there's no winning this. There's no, there's no turning it around. I don't want to be the guy to spoil it. With 50 seconds left, time's the only thing he's got on his side. And even that's kind of against him because he probably wants to save here. So, Cloud9... A must-win round. They break the money of Imperial, and they do it flawlessly. We need more out of Vinny, man. Like, I put a lot of faith in him here. I I thought, what with it being Vertigo map that he's, like, super comfortable on individually, we would get a lot more. But these opening fights have so rarely gone his way, and I think one of the reasons why Napani looks so pretty on the scoreline is he's just constantly shutting Vinny down in the ramp head-to-head. -head. Yeah, it's not even really been comparable, right? When Cloud9 uh, wanted a ramp on the T side, they got it. Oh, dear. Next. We can't die after time. That would be insult to injury. And Inter's trying to make it so he's done it. After the clock expires, no loss bonus, no weaponry, nothing. Cloud9, this is their game right now. There should be no way back in. Imperial have to eco and play with their backs up against the wall at 14-9. But yeah, Cloud9 have been, you know, th this is the difference maker. Right? Imperial don't really have the depth on that A-Ramp. They don't know how to stop Cloud9. They can't force respect out of these aggressive peaks. Cloud9 are dropping one ways. It's just getting messy. Imperial dueling out middle. They haven't found any picks from this position. Now could be a time. Inters is wiggling. Hobbit has that far boost denied, and now you know there's more around the corner. Molly, you gotta swing left or right. You gotta commit, or you gotta die. Fallen will. Hobbit's found that headshot, and one by one they trickle to their demise. The util's just been paramount in yeah. this round, man. Like, Especially first half as well. Dude, I, everyone was almost dead before they even got out of middle. Like, there's not really much else to it here. You're gonna struggle to find anything versus. Cloud9 in the mid area, they get locked out. Think about it this way, even on the T side, like how we were talking about the util for Cloud9, because they were running amazing A executes, and Axel was getting into really ratty positions uh, in post plants, Hobbit as well, up on those pillars. But we haven't actually seen Imperial A execute. Remember the pistol where they bought up three sets of util, they got a one for one, and then they walked back on ramp, tried to re-aggress, and they just got dueled by Shiro and Nafani. They never ran their exec. It hasn't changed since that point. Never Ever have Imperial garnered enough respect to have top ramp and throw an XX and maybe pace change is the answer. Yeah, Fallen's going to get the opener and it's a big scalp to find, man. Axile removed from the round. That's one of the top performers right now, knocked out of the equation. Take one place, you lose another. Nafani is all the way down bottom A. I mean, he's just been a constant nuisance, right? Always in the back of your mind. That he's doing something over here at ramp, whether it's getting picks, getting info, he's delivered it all. This round, it's gonna be the latter, right? He has that knowledge that this is not the A play. So look at this mini map, look at what it's doing. Cloud9 drawing a lot of bodies over towards B. They are a little paranoid about mid. Right, there's been a big hole here for a long while now, and maybe someone could have exploited it. That's what they're a little concerned about, and it's that fear just eating away at the back of them. I hope they just clear it at some point, just to alleviate that worry. And now that he's about to do that now, man, the info this guy's been getting is so important. Like, now it's just a big sigh of relief. Nafani not only had the info that oh. A-Rap was clear, now he knows mid's empty. And so these B players can full focus yeah. on defending a ramp exec. It's more util, but they've thrown in deep mollies. They haven't cleared close yet. And uh, this re-aggression for Hobbit, 
Su supplemented by Inters is perfect. Molly's going in. They jump check it. That's a nice shot for FNX. Inters is still here. The back turn gives him a double. There's more where that came from. Inters mauls Imperial up in this B site. They dodge the flash, but they can't dodge death. Nafani delivers it out in spades and Fur can't clutch today. 15 rounds for Cloud9. And this is far better from them on the second map of this series. More of what we wanted from this squad. It looks like Mirage is an inevitability in the BO3. And I think that's where things really do level out. One where Imperial have far more experience because right now they're running out of ideas. Yeah, I mean, dude, I am very impressed with Cloud9 coming into this and... Not really, like, showing any woes from the last game. Not carrying any of that loss in with them, right? If anything, they felt fired up from the get-go. I think Nafani, like, really took that loss personally and has put it all into holding down this ramp side. Yeah, look at this buy as well. They don't even have the util. Well, so here's something else as well. Like you said, like, you think it kind of levels out when we get to Mirage. I think, thankfully, Imperial are going to have a lot more ideas up their sleeve. They're going to have a much bigger depth to it. But it's still a map that Cloud9 are on a massive streak on. 100% yeah. win rate, similar to their Vertigo. Imperial set themselves towards the early. Dude, I think it speaks volumes as to how oppressive Shiro's been with this AWP in the second half, like tying it in to the idea that we haven't seen an A execute since they tried going there in the pistol. It just feels off limits. Like, you've got to run into Nafani, and if he doesn't wreck you, Shiro will. It's only left these B plays in the back pocket of Imperial. And even then, you're hesitant to say they've really worked out. Oh, quick switching on this spot for FNX is, is how you is how you glitch through the wall. If you quick switch up against the wood, you will show. Axel was ready for it the whole time. Double boost, double denial. Send them back to map three. Yeah, it's still grinded to a very ugly halt, Mike. Oh. At this point, with the bomb out in the Woo. open, there's Hobbit <laughs> with the closer. Big triple. takes to a third map we're going to mirage it's all settled there vertigo one that imperial want to forget for cloud nine they're fired up man yeah for sure they're on a six win streak in that third map as well they looked a lot more focused in on that game you could see the stress getting to them into those overtimes and that was never the case for imperial they were focused they were calm they were cool and well right there they're out of ideas so i think mirage will probably be a lot